Welcome back to another edition of Mavs Reaction Analysis. I need a better name for this. Still need a name for this, but we're back with another video on a current player. You may have, you may remember him, or if you're newer to the party, more of the Luka Doncic, Kristaps Porzingis fandom here. Uh, this is Seth Curry. He signed a four-year, $32 million deal to return to the Mavericks this summer. $8 million a year for a guy that's a career 43% three-point shooter and 45% last season with the Blazers is a great deal. Now, he was with us previously. He was here in 2016, 16-17, uh, and 17-18, Dennis's rookie year, but he did not play in that second year with us because of a stress reaction in his leg. I think it was his left leg. Caused him to miss the entire season, and then it was a huge bummer when he then left to go to Portland, he had a better role to find there. It was a better team, chance to do something in the playoffs, which he had never been to. So it made sense for him. I was incredibly bummed out to lose him, though, because in record time, he became one of my favorite Mavericks of recent years. And I'm thrilled to have him back here. I think he is a perfect weapon in Rick Carlisle's system. The best year of his career was here in Dallas in 2016-2017. So shout out here to Free Dawkins for putting the clips together. We're going to look at those today uh, and look at not just the three-point shooting of Seth Curry, but some of his some of his very nice offensive moves as well. So let's run it back without any further ado. Off the pick and roll, three-point knocks it down. Steps into it, knocks it down. I mean, you just see the three-point shooting as is. Baseline pull up, I like it. Gets a steal in transition. Good setup for Justin Anderson, I believe. Yep. Floater. I mean, he's got more to his game than people realize. As a defender, it's the role. As a defender, he's good on the perimeter. Last season, opponents shot about five or six points below their season average against him from beyond the three-point line. But if you get inside that three-point line against him, then he is a subpar to below average defender there. I mean, look at that. He's going into the teeth of the Warriors defense and knocking it down. The guy's fearless, good setup again in transition. Easy steal. And uh, <laughs> transition three, I like it, that's cold-blooded. Doesn't matter that the score is lopsided, this was a bad Mavericks team. Curry, Curry showed a really versatile offensive game, I felt. Again, as a defender, from the perimeter, he's good, but once you start getting inside that three-point line, I think it's a more of a mixed bag to subpar. I don't think he'll be a starter here in Dallas, although he did in this particular season have a really good stretch as a starter. He started more games that year with Dallas than he has anywhere else in his career. I think he only got like one start with Portland last year. But he he really flourished in this system with Rick Carlisle. And this was with bad components. This was the year that Yogi Ferrell was the other breakout significant guy of this year. I mean, Harrison Barnes was there and Wes Matthews was there, but that was that was a really rough year that set us up in the lottery to get Dennis Smith Jr. So the fact that he shined there gives me a lot of hope that he can really shine, really shine now with Luka and KP and all the gravity that they put on. Finger roll off the drive. I like it. Ooh, that pass. That's what's up. He's not the one-dimensional thing. Everyone everyone wants to dial him in and say he's just the three-point shooting guy. I understand that because that is his biggest asset, but you know what? He's got more to him than that. Curry is tremendous. Yeah, we still had Darren Williams this season, that season. We ended up sending him that year to Cleveland. I think he got waived and then signed for Cleveland. Is what happened. <laughs> so this season here, the Mavericks started something crazy, like 4-17 and 17 in the first 21 games. And they got going in December. And from December to February, they actually rallied to within striking distance of the 8 seed. To the point where there were actually people speculating, like, there's Porzingis. To the point where people were actually speculating, like, holy crap, Rick Carlisle's really going to take a team 
that only won four of its first 21 games and drag it into the playoffs, isn't it? And Curry and Yogi Ferrell, again, that this was the season that, to me, was really about the two of them and their emergence. That is, that was the guys doing it right there. Those were the guys doing it. There was Farrell on that fine there. Fearless, man. Into the teeth of the defense. He doesn't care. All right, here we go on the layup. Very nice. Nice touch. Little shake, hesitation, and roll. Sets up. Okay, there you go. Floater. And again, this was the Cavaliers during that run of uh, trips to the finals. I mean, he's getting some plays here. He's getting some steals. Sets him up in the corner. Oh, I don't care if you're in my grill. I will rain down hellfire upon you. It, it's just absurd. Absurd, this dude's lethality. Shooting the shooting the rock. It, it really is. Ilasova had no chance. This guy can create, dude. He can create in the pick and roll, not just for himself, but for his teammates. And when you give him teammates like Luka Doncic, like Kristaps Porzingis. Even like a DeLon Wright, you know, he doesn't have the three-point shooting element, but he can create a little bit too. You set all these guys up, all these guys up on one team, you're going to have a damn exciting offense. I, I think the Mavericks are going to be a very high-scoring team this coming season. Defense will be the question. Rebounding will be the bigger question. Obviously, uh, Curry kind of helps on the team defensive aspect. Not really at all on the rebounding. But other than that, there's a lot to like about this team moving forward. It, it seriously brings a smile to my face having him back on the Mavericks because I think he is exactly the kind of guy you want to bring back to the team and to be, have been able to do it, to have been able to do it at such a cheap cost, eight million a year for four years. Yeah, all right. Let's see here. Blows by Chandler Parsons and then rolls it in. Sets up the alley -oop to a Nerlens Noel in transition. There's another one here. Nope. Pull up Jay. Stops on a dime. Gives you back a nickel. That's probably a better expression for that. Here he is with the steal off Mark Gasol. And then splashing a three in transition on Conley. Dude will give it to you. He is a very competent shooter. Woo! Woo! Look at that. Just the moves, man. Good God. He, he scooped that from, like, his pant leg, his shorts leg. And 1-3. Wow. Even having seen all of this at the time, and then already having myself gone back and watched some of these highlights, it's just incredible, some of the shooting. Like, if you can get anything like this version of Seth Curry on your team, holy crap, dude, is your offense going to be dynamic. It's another one of those reasons I say that I think this team's a lot better than last year's team. Last year's team, you know, they tried to build it like they've done for years. I steal. You know, the Mavericks have tried to... Oops, actually, like that. The Mavericks have tried to build veteran teams in recent years and go off of that. That's why you've had your Darren Williamses. That's why you've had your Harrison Barnes and Wesley Matthews and DeAndre Jordans of the world. And nothing against those guys, but that's just not a great core. Like, I know they tried to convince themselves last year's team was not going to be a team that needed the lottery. Uh, and they didn't end up... I mean, they did, but they, because they had traded the pick, it was essentially like they didn't need the lottery. But it, it is what it is. They nice move on Steven Adams. Very nice. It's one of those things where your team now is more dynamic than it was with Harrison Barnes and Wesley Matthews and DeAndre Jordan. Yeah, you missed the rebounding that you had with Jordan. 
uh, maybe even a tiny bit the rim protection, but I argue that he got way better in that regard because DeAndre Jordan was part of that Kristaps Porzingis, Porzingis trade. So no on that. I will draw that argument, actually. <laughs> but 100%. Hunt and one. 100%. Uh, Harrison Barnes, you know, he can create his own offense a little bit. That's got value. He's a decent defender. Deep three. He's a uh, decent defender and everything like that, but he's not a guy that can create for his teammates, and he's not a number one guy. So to have paid him potentially $24 million would have been insane, I think. Left hand scoop. There you go. Deep three. Play. Yeah, this man is a bad, bad man. A bad dude out there. Again, salute to, as you see, the thing in the bottom right corner. Free Dawkins for the highlights. This is a, this is a legit addition to the team. And even when people, you know, I think people were excited to bring him back, but I think they kind of forgot a little bit. They were just like, oh, yeah, he's a good three-point shooter for us. He had, like, what, like 10, 11, maybe 12 points. He averaged about 12 and a half points that season, shot about 42% from three. So, pff, frankly, by his standards, that was a downbeat in terms of his three-point shooting. He started more than 30 games for us, I think. I want to say it was somewhere in the mid-30s. And he was phenomenal. It's the only place in his career he's done that. And as you see here, he was a complete offensive weapon. Could create his own shot, create for his teammates, could knock down threes wide open, could knock down threes off the dribble, off the screen pin down. He could knock down extended range threes. He could drive to the basket and finish scoop shots around the rim, pull up jumpers, you name it. Floaters. We saw pretty much the entire bag, everything but dunks from Seth Curry in this game or in this video. And having him with the crop of guys we got now, I think there is a lot to look forward to. I think is I think health permitting, that's always something you gotta throw in there. He is going to be better this year. Not in terms of like points per game but more impactful and lethal for us now than he was in 2016-17 because that was a crop of guys who, that was not a good Mavericks team at all, and he shined bright, but there wasn't a lot going on. I think now the gravity of some of these guys around him are going to open up things monumentally for him. You're going to see another year where he's 44 45% from three point, or from beyond the three-point line, and you're going to see something, instead of his like eight points a game he had with, Portland I think you could see him knock that up a little bit I could see 10 maybe just under 11 a game from him again he's not going to be a starter but I think his shooting off the bench and his fit in particular within Carlisle system uh, his perimeter defense I think all of that is going to work pretty well for him to get some significant burn and I'm frankly higher on Seth than Tim Hardaway Jr. I know you're going to have both of them, and Hardaway is going to be your volume guy. He's going to have some nights he can have big games for you, but I'm just I'm stoked about adding Curry back. Not so stoked about still having Tim Hardaway Jr. presently. He could be, end up being involved in a trade down the road, but that's a different subject entirely. So that's going to wrap it up for this highlights video. Thank you again to Free Dawkins for putting it all together. I will be doing more of these. I'm going to feature some other guys as well, some of the current players, and I'm going to probably try and find some more uh, vintage collection games for you as well. So until next time, guys, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Salute.